It's not about me As if you should do things my way You alone are God And I surrender It's all about you Jesus And all this is for you For your glory and your fame It's not about Let us come to Almighty God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you have revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, it is you we worship, one God, yet revealing yourself as three persons of the same substance. Father, we acknowledge the mystery that you have shown to us from as early as the baptism of Jesus Christ our Lord. We acknowledge your omnipotence. We acknowledge your omnipresence. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, that you are omniscient, all-knowing, and that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts and your ways higher than our ways. And so we join our hearts together, O oh Lord, in faith to honor you, to worship you, to praise you, to adore you, to acknowledge, O Lord, your majesty and sovereignty, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Speak to us today, O God. Instill in us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, the desire to walk in your way. Show us that way, O God. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 to 22. The people's hopes began to rise, and they wonder whether John perhaps might be the Messiah. So, John said to all of them, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I am not good enough, even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the shaft in a fire that never goes out. In many different ways, John preached the good news to people and urged them to change their ways. But John reprimanded the governor Herod because he had married Herodias, his brother's wife, and had done many other evil things. Then Herod did an even worse thing by putting John in prison. After all the people had been baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit came down upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear son, and I am pleased with you. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his most holy and precious word. We join once more in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, speak to us in power and in might by your spirit and grant us receptive hearts. Let not your word return unto you empty, but Lord, may it find fertile soil in our hearts and bear good fruit in our lives. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. In the season of Epiphany, we are reminded of who Jesus was. And there are many scriptures that we use during this time of the year that tell us about Jesus. We remember the story of the Magi and how they came to see Jesus following his star and how that represented Jesus being revealed to the Gentiles. We remember the story of the wedding at Cana and how Jesus' first miracle revealed his power as the Son of God. We also remember Jesus' baptism, a baptism that teaches us about our baptism, a baptism that teaches us that Jesus humbled himself for our sakes. Today we will look at Jesus' baptism and how our baptism is connected to his baptism. The first thing we learn about Jesus' baptism and our baptism is that we are joined with Jesus. Why did Jesus bother to be baptized? You and I who are sinners, we need to be baptized, especially with John's baptism of repentance. But Jesus did not have to be baptized. He had no sin. He was sinless. But why then should he? be baptized. Matthew tells us that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist even after he protested. John knew that he was unworthy, but that Jesus was worthy. And so he said, I need to be baptized by you. And you come to me to be baptized? So why did this sinless son of God submit himself to a baptism of repentance? The story is told of a Dutch Christian family who was sent to a concentration camp for hiding Jews to save them from the Holocaust under Hitler in Nazi Germany during World War II. There's an interesting story about the father of this family when the Jews were forced by the Nazis to wear the Star of David so that they could be easily identified, 
the father of the family, who was not a Jew, lined up to receive one of the stars. He wore it because he wanted to identify himself with the people for whom he and his family had been taking risks and helping them all those years. He was prepared to be so completely identified with the Jews that he was willing to wear a sign of shame and suffer persecution and even death for the sake of the people he loved. He didn't have to wear it. He chose to wear the star of David in spite of the consequences. In the same way, my dear friends, Jesus did not have to be baptized. But because he loves us so much, he was baptized to identify himself with us, fallen humanity. Jesus joined himself to us by baptism into the Jordan River. And when we are baptized, we are joined with him. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21 says, Baptism now saves you, not as a removal of physical dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a cleansed conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of the Father. We are joined to Jesus, and so through his death, we are made clean. It is not the outer dirt that is washed away, but the inner dirt of sin. Secondly, Jesus' baptism joins us to him and his baptism because we are chosen by the Father. After Jesus is baptized, we are told that the heavens open and we hear the voice of the Father saying, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Before Jesus begins his ministry, God affirms publicly who Jesus is, his beloved son. In all the dark days ahead, in all the trouble that he will see, even unto death, Jesus was able to hold fast to that assurance that he was God's beloved son. And those words are not only for Jesus, my dear friends. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 tells us, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. One author says of our baptism, God gave you a name that day. God said, You are my beloved child. And he doesn't change his mind. We need to remember that not just, just on our good days, but also on our horrible days when things are not going good. Thank God that we are baptized because it means something. And it means something to God that we are his beloved children. We may say we don't even remember our baptism. Many of us were baptized as children. Why should that mean anything to me? My dear friends, we may not remember our baptism, but God doesn't forget it. God remembers it because on that day, he gave us a name, a name that we are his beloved child. And so, my dear friends, we are joined with Jesus through his baptism and our baptism. We are chosen by the Father through his baptism and our baptism. But it also tells us that we are empowered by the Spirit. Luke's gospel play, places a huge emphasis on the Holy Spirit. As Origen puts it, an early church father, he says Christ is born, the Spirit is his forerunner. Christ is baptized, the Spirit bears him witness. Christ is tempted, the Spirit leads him. Christ ascends, the Spirit fills his place. 
Origen is telling us, my dear friends, that there is no part of our lives that Jesus is not present. He is not joined to us. All throughout Luke's gospel, everything Jesus does, the Spirit is there. John the Baptist predicted when he was preaching to the people in the wilderness that one is coming who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then after Jesus is baptized, as he came out of the water, the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Jesus is baptized and the Holy Spirit comes down. Like the waters of the flood, when it was a dove who showed that Noah was safe, so at the waters of baptism, it is a dove that shows the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is baptized and the Holy Spirit comes down. So to at our baptisms, my dear friends, we are baptized. And it is our firm conviction and belief that the Holy Spirit comes down and stays with us. Do we have that Holy Spirit fire in our lives? Do people see it being expressed in our lives? One writer said, often when we look at great Christians in the past, John Wesley, Martin Luther, they seem to have fire in their souls. Unfortunately, what we have in our souls is often not fire, but ice cream. The writer is saying sometimes that our lives are not reflective of the fire of the Holy Spirit, our conviction, our commitment, our determination, our faith in God. If we, my dear friends, are not here at worship just for entertainment, if we want to be great disciples of Jesus, we have to have fire in our souls, that Holy Spirit fire. We need it to flood into our lives because it is a sign of our baptism. For as it was predicted by John, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Finally, we are joined to Jesus, his baptism and ours, because we are sent out to serve. Jesus' baptism took place at the beginning of his ministry. God reveals him to the world. And now, John's ministry will end. And Jesus' ministry will begin in full. John made it absolutely clear that Jesus coming into the world and beginning his ministry must result in John decreasing in importance and Jesus increasing in importance. Jesus' baptism marks the start of his ministry. In the same way, our baptism is meant to mark the start of our ministry. Martin Luther describes this moment of baptism as our ordination into the priesthood of all believers. And so, my dear friends, Christianity is not a spectator sport where we sit on the sidelines. We must be involved in it. God has a job with our names on it. And baptism is meant to mark the beginning of our ministry. It is not about sitting idly by. It is about getting out into the vineyards and doing the work. Matt Hoffman describes the miracle of Jesus' ministry with heavenly voices and the Holy Spirit like a dove goes and goes on to say, what happened in your baptism is no less a miracle by any means. Your baptism was filled with Jesus and connected you to him. Your baptism was filled with the Holy Spirit and marked the start of his work in your life. Your baptism was witnessed by your heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth, 
who smiled and said of you exactly what he said of Jesus. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. So my dear friends, as we continue our journey through Epiphany, and as we remember Jesus' baptism, and as we connect it to our own baptism, remember that we are joined with Jesus. Remember that we are chosen by the Father. We remember that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And all of this is to remind us that we are sent out to serve in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. come together in prayer Lord you have called us to be your representatives here on earth and you have enabled us O oh God through the baptism of Jesus Christ and our own baptism we are united and empowered by the Holy Spirit to do your work in the world father as we go enliven us Guide us, show us your way, that we, O oh Lord, may be a light to all nations. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. 
both now and even forevermore. 